There we go. Okay, yeah. welcome everybody to today's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. Uh, indicate your presence by saying you're here or something else, Nat? Here. Tara? Here. Eugene? Here. Tammy? Here. Didn't hear you, Tammy. Here. You you're hear me? muted. No, I'm not muted. According oh, to okay. My... Well, it's very hard to hear you. Okay. I don't know. I'll see what All I All right. Can... Now I can hear you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I know of no changes or additions to the agenda. We have uh, minutes from uh, October. Anybody like to move the adoption of the minutes? Opted. So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any changes or additions to the um, minutes? Okay. Hearing none. On the question of approving the minutes, Nat? Yes. Barra? Abstain. I wasn't here. Uh, Tammy? Yes. Jean? Yes. Okay. And Austin votes yes. Thank you for that. Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. Uh, any member of the public wishing to speak, if they would raise their virtual hand, that would be great. Okay, I see no public comment. All right, next is um, next is the president's report. So I want to praise the. Board of Trustees of the Jones Library. Um, why do I want to praise the Board of Trustees of the Jones Library? Uh, the Board of Trustees of the Jones Library made a very hard call several months ago um, and decided to commit a substantial amount of resources and time to an effort to go through a rebidding process. But that decision was not popular with, with some people in town. And, and those people, in my view, rightly expressed skepticism and doubt because it wasn't clear that we were gonna achieve what we set out to achieve. Uh, there's a long way to go until we get to the promised land. And um, you remember that the journey through the desert is two steps forward, one step back. So there's a long way to go, much work to be done, uh, potholes to be navigated. But I want to congratulate you and us on um, the fact that we did what we did, confident that the project is worth the effort that we're putting into it. And lo and behold, in a world full of Surus, Surus is a library talk for aggravation, uh, we've gotten a bid that's come in under budget. Indeed, we spent a, you know, a fair chunk of change uh, and we came in with a bid that is not only under our budget, but is millions of dollars less than what that bid was in the in the spring. Some of that had nothing to do with us. It's, you know, the market, this, that, and the next thing. But some of it, I think, is because of the redesign work that we did. So um, it, it's not a moment to celebrate. We'll celebrate at the ribbon cutting but it is a moment that should not go unremarked upon. And we were aided by, um, you know, Feingold Alexander and Bob Parent's done a yeoman kind of work. And of course, Sharon has not missed a meeting and Sharon has learned more about this or that law than she probably wanted to. But at the end of the day, the call was ours. 
It wasn't Bob Perrins. It wasn't Paul Bachman's. It wasn't FAA's. It was ours. And it took some um, fortitude to stay the course. And so far, it looks like that was... Um, that was uh, a good a good decision to have made. So I wanted to re remark on it. Okay. That was that was that. All right. Committee committee reports. By the way. By the way, it's November. And you know it comes after November. You better watch out. You better not cry. So it's been a, an annual thing that the Board of Trustees provides a kind of something for the staff. And Sharon will let us know what it is that would be most appreciated by the by the by the staff, but let's not let that slip from the agenda. Uh, and I I promise to contribute so long as no one uses the word pickleball in this meeting. <laughs> Far. I think the term is "stay out of my kitchen," is what I learned in pick at the pickleball tournament. Stay out of my kitchen. Yes. I, I can't explain that to you. It's something to do with the game. Um, there are two lines near the net, the and you can't go in those oh, lines, and those lines are called the kitchen. Oh. For those um, who want <laughs> unnecessary details about pickleball. Yeah. But my hand is raised mainly, I just, um, do we have a sense of timeline now? Like, what is the next step? I know we're waiting for this 106 process, but like, is the library going to start looking for an interim location? Is it? We we did start talking about interim uh, spaces and putting out an RFP. So I'm working with, um, with Bob and Paul on that. Um, so that'll take time. Um, but really the, the, following, finishing, completing the 106 process, having the archaeological survey completed. Uh, those are the, the two big tasks. Okay. Anything else? Just wanted a general sense. Thank you. Yeah. Uh uh, so just a question on that archaeological, um, it's digging and so forth. Can that be done in the winter or what is the, what are the restrictions, if any, on that? Uh, oh, am I? Yes, I'm unmuted. Um, uh, great question. Uh, uh, we are, we have contracted with Ginny Adams, uh, pal again, uh, for this. She hasn't said, uh, that a frozen ground would stop her but I suppose maybe it could. Um, stay tuned. Of course, these days, who knows when, if ever, the ground freezes, so. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we were in the middle of doing the report from the building committee. Um, you know, the bids came in, we got two bids. Uh, the placeholder for the electrical subcontract bid um, was there. The electrical subcontract bids that we've gotten, um, one of them came in below the placeholder figure. So again, good, good news on that score. The 106 process is underway uh, and we'll continue um, uh, to try to achieve a memorandum of agreement or memorandum of understanding. Um, and then hopefully when that is done, uh, we will be talking about how to sign, the town will be talking about how to sign a contract with the general contractor. But there's lots of work to be done. There's fund, funds to be raised. 
uh, the 106 process is going to again take up some some time. There'll be a building committee, Sharon, on the 19th, as I recall. Correct. Uh, and we'll be talking again about the bids and how they came in and what they mean and um, what the steps are going forward. Okay. If nothing else about the building committee, I would call on uh, FAR for buildings and facilities. Uh, we have not met since October, right? We're meeting next week, Sharon. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, uh, let me look. Let me look. Sorry. Yeah, because we canceled our last meeting. We're meeting. It'll be the 19th. The 19th, yeah. Okay. Is there anything going on in the building, Sharon, that we need to discuss? Uh, oh, um, our, oh, we'll talk about it during buildings and facilities. Okay. Great. Thank you, Farah. Lee Edwards is not here, so we don't have a development committee um, report. But are there any questions about what's going on in the fundraising? Do we know what's going on in the fundraising? Sharon? I do not. Uh, the only report I have is what was in the packet, and that's all I know. All right. Okay. Uh, we have a phone now. Someone has a P. It might be Lee. It is Lee. I'm on my phone. Oh, I'm Lee. A, nice a to hero nice of to... the internet. <laughs> but nice I can't to... figure out how. It's nice to hear you too. I'm sorry I missed the beginning. And I can't figure out how to get my image on the screen, but at least I can hear you and you can hear me. So we just had gotten to the to the development committee. So do you want to do you want to oh. give us? <laughs> sure, sure. I'll give you what I can. Hang on, given my limited access. Um, let's see what do we have. All right. So um, we're the development and and the investment committee. So for the annual fund, uh, well, I'm, first of all, I'm sorry. That's, it took me a long time to get on here, and I'm not my usual self. Um, the development committee is, you know, very happy that the bid came in where it came, and we are um, pursuing leads on the assumption that the project is going to go through, although we know there are still a few wrinkles to be sorted out. Um, Beyond that, the annual fund is doing very well, continuing to outpace what we did last year. As of the end of October, the annual fund was at 35,168 with 188 gifts and the uh, versus where we were last year, which was a little under 30 with 148 gifts. So it's not just the money, it's that we're contacting new people and we have information about new people and new friends. And the pickleball um, uh, tournament was a great success and grossed almost 22000 And so we figure that we will net at least 17000 which is a very good number for, a, for an event. Um, the uh, capital campaign is wherever the numbers um that were in the packet that sharon sent uh oh they're all right I, I wrote them down here the capital campaign uh has raised a, a little under um has raised a little over four million from the community campaign and has raised from all sources a little under uh 40 million which again is very good. And the endowment is at 
9,112,851, and the Woodbury Fund is at 770,683, which is also very good. And that's, since I can't access my screen, all I can do is uh, give you the figures that I just gave you. Thank you, Lee. Lee, are there any... And I can't even... Yeah. Are there any kind of imminent prospects for significant gifts? Yes, absolutely. I thought perhaps you had mentioned that before I could get in. I didn't want to shadow your parade. Uh, yes, we have uh, two anonymous um, potential six-figure commitments. I mean, they're more than potential gifts. They're significant commitments. They're both anonymous. One is for 500000 and one is for 200000 wow. And I hope that at least one of them will be something that we can bring to uh, next month's meeting. And if those two, just my math isn't so good, if those two gifts were to come, those commitments were to be realized, that would bring us to, are those commitments from the so-called com community campaign? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. All right. Other questions for Lee Edwards? And you, ha you have to speak up because I can't see you. I'm sorry. Other questions for Lee Edwards? This is the way my sweet love talks to me, with that tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So next is uh, PPP. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, first, I'd like to talk about the library governance project. Eugene has spearheaded this to have a um, a sort of flow of where everything is and who's responsible for whom, and um, he's been working on this, and I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to move that we approve the FY26 action plan that was in your packet. Um, okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, the action plan is now on the floor for discussion, any discussion of the action plan. Well, this action plan needs to be approved um, because it's due with the Mass Board of Library Commissioners as of December 1st. Um, it's uh, been been reviewed by the JEDI Committee um, and attached in the packet is their, their survey report. And I think there were some minor changes. I don't know if Farah did some editing um, from the uh, document that we were working on at PPP but we need to approve this um, because of the due date to the MBLC. Um, yep, Farah. I sent my edits to Sharon. Okay. Yeah, and Sharon. I mean, they were minor. Right, yeah. I know. Thank you, your editing skill. Sharon said that it, there were some changes, just some editing. Okay, um, any questions about it? Okay, on the question of approving the action plan, that I, I say yes. Power. Yes. Eugene. Yes. Lee Edwards. Yes. Tammy. Yes. And Austin votes yes. And thank you to the PPP and the director for working on the action plan. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to. Um, Farah to report on the Jedi Committee. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Tammy. Um, I have two motions on the floor. And uh, but before that, we uh, well, let's do this first. First is we had um uh, one of our mem members left the committee because he when uh was school got a little uh involved. So we have a motion to approve Jenny Riley to be appointed to the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Subcommittee. Um, can I get a second on that? Well, that's the motion. 
Needs a second. 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 Barb, can you just tell us a little bit about Jenny? Yeah. Yeah. Um, she has been an Amherst resident since 2014. She's executive director of the RX Foundation, where she leads grant making and related work at the intersection of health and democracy. She has degrees from Smith College and Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. Um, Jenny's also the parent of a sixth grader at Crocker Farm and has been involved with the Crocker Farm PDO for many years as a co-chair and as a treasurer. I think she's going to bring um, she's going to bring a lot of skills and experience to the committee, to the subcommittee. And just to be clear about the process, did the committee meet with her? Yeah. So right. I know Jenny, Jenny. So actually Sharon and Mia met with her. And I guess the next step is that Austin, you have to appoint her and then she yep. has to go to town hall. Yep. 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 So actually this motion is a recommendation to the chair of the board. Okay. So do I need to rephrase that? Uh, we'll we'll understand it for what it is, which is okay. a re recommendation that I approve the um I approve the appointment. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on this motion to recommend the appointment? All right. On that question, that how do you vote? I vote yes. Bar. Yes. Eugene. Yes. Lee Edwards. Yes. Tammy? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. Um, I have one more motion. Is That's to approve the 2023-24 uh, Jones Library Jedi Survey Report that was dated 10-18-24. So um, this, the report was in our packets. Yep. And um, we had the, sur the survey... Um, ran last year for about, I want to say six to eight months. And the the idea of the survey was for the subcommittee to get a sense of whether patrons feel a sense of belonging in the library. I don't know if any, anyone on the board took the survey. There were about 75 people who responded and 69% uh, of them said that they and their family members always felt a sense of belonging. 22 said this was the case often, and 6% said that they and their family rarely felt a sense of belonging. And the reasons were, for the people who felt a sense of belonging, it was to, to, to do with the staff and their friendliness, and the, you know, the, they felt like the collections represented them, they liked the programming, et cetera. Um, People who said that they or their family members didn't feel like they belonged, it, or some of it was as a re result of lack of racial and ethnic diversity, racial profi uh, profiling, unwelcoming and judgmental staff, and sometimes uh, children and teens not feeling welcome. There were also a few people who felt that some of our materials were too progressive and they wanted us to have some more conservative material in the library. So we, we Mia collated the information, Mia and one of the other members, Rafael, worked on this report. And then we also had some next steps and actually our committee met today in person at the good at, uh, at the library and we came away with some action steps and part of some of it was we wanted to look into another survey we want to talk to uh we want to look into seeing um if staff could have like talk to the staff and to Sharon about so Sharon sorry you were you weren't there today um, about more about train diversity training. Uh, we had originally when we formed, we had talked about um, collaborating with the town DEI departments. So some there there's um, 
a member of the committee is going to connect with um, Pamela Nolan Young. So it was just, we went away, we came away with some action steps and just in terms of what we can do next. Sorry, I'm rambling, any questions? Yeah, so, oh, I'm sorry, Nat, let me just ask this question. It's a procedural question. I'm not sure why th there's a need to approve the report. So I just wonder if you could explain I mean, the action steps or recommendations that are contained in the report, uh, I, I mean, I'm not opposed to approving it, but I, I'm just it's kind of I curious. Think, I think originally we were supposed to go through PPP. Sharon, just if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there was no meeting. And the thing is, we wanted to move this along. And Ginny Hamilton of the Capital Campaign, who's also a member, has drafted a press release so that we can get one of the things was to get this the findings out into the into the community. So I figured that, or my understanding was that we had the the trustees have to approve this report, but maybe not. Well, it's a report of a survey, right? Right, but it so yeah okay. And it contains some recommendations, but the rec I mean, I don't want to be, but the recommendations didn't seem to me to be at the level of a change in policy. You know, the no. library director can ask her staff to do whatever the library director believes is appropriate. So, I mean, I, I'm happy to approve it if if you think that would be helpful, but I wasn't exactly clear you know, like, what am I approving? I mean, the, the survey produced some very interesting results. And the things that you contain under action steps or recommendation all seem to me to be fine. But we'll, we can come back to that. But Well, I guess I thought that was the next step. And if, if we don't need to, if we don't need no, to. I'm, ha I'm happy to. Yeah. I was just not clear about why. So, yeah. Oh, just a, a question. I noticed that one of the um, steps, which I think is very important, is to meet with library staff to discuss the survey findings and next steps. And I was wondering, um, I don't, this is a question for Farah or for Sharon, but but that sounds like a really important thing. And how does that happen? Is that small groups or is it just a blast email that goes out or how is that envisioned? It seems very important for the staff to get that feedback. So as we discussed it today, the idea was two of the commi committee members would would reach out to start Sharon and the staff. And we already have a member of the staff. Like originally Mia was the, the person, the staff member on the subcommittee, but right now it's Linda Wentworth because Mia's um, helping out while Claire, Claire is away. So that's the next step. So it would be to go speak with the staff and Sharon and figure out how we can like discuss the findings, but it would be small groups. Yeah. Other other thoughts, Tammy? Yeah, I mean, this seems to be um, something in the purview of the director, um, you know, uh, looking at the recommendations and working with, with um, the committee and, and the staff. So I'm not really sure how much the board should be involved with um, the details of this. It seems to be uh, uh, under the purview of the director. Um, that's just my, my take. Yeah. Okay. Sarah, do you want, do you want to, did you want to say anything about the survey results and recommendations uh, so i wasn't at today's jedi meeting so i i'll oh. i'll talk with more with farah and um and address your concerns um so i i just want to say that i'm really glad that the survey was done um i think it is very important i think the work of your of the jedi committee is uh incredibly important but I do want to express um, uh, a worry that we not 
um, we not rest assured uh, that we don't have a problem. Um, that 6% said that their family felt, really felt a sense of belonging. You know, it's not a, it's not a majority. Uh, Farah, do you want to, did you want to, I was going to say a couple more. more yeah, things. no, go ahead. I want to speak to that once you're done. Okay, I, I'm not going to take. I, um, and I think it's important for us to do what this you say you're going to do, which is to really kind of figure out what is going on. Um, a number six percent can lead you to think, well, you know, it's not a huge problem. So that's one of the. You know, numbers tell you a lot sometimes, but sometimes they they don't reveal as much as you want to want them to reveal. So that's what I, I, I think the survey is very valuable. I think it's a lot of good information that's in it. But I just wanted to say that I think there's much more work to be done um, to understand what would make the library uh, even more um, a home for everybody in the community. End of end of my my humanistic denunciation of numbers. Um, <laughs> can I? Yeah, Farah? Matt, I'm just gonna just respond to that. No, I um, I'm sorry if it came across as me thinking that there was no work to be done. There is it work did, to it, be done. It, it did not. I'm yeah, 70, 75 people responding to a survey is nothing. So there's a lot of community outreach to be done. There, I think we need more surveys. We have the problem of a lot of people don't feel that the staff represents the community and the collections and the artwork. So there is a lot more work to be done, thus the next steps and recommendations. But by no means does this say that there is not a problem. There is definitely a problem. So I'm sorry if you thought that I was thinking, I was trying to say that everybody feels a sense of belonging. They definitely don't. So far, I was not, uh, again- No, I, it's I okay. I'm just, I should have been clearer when I first um, started speaking about the survey, but yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't talking about what you said. I was talking about the- what, Right, what the I underlying, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a lot of work to be done. That's yeah. the steps and needing to reach out to the community yep. and getting more people in to, to Absolutely. speak with Absolutely. us. Nat? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to echo. I think it's a great, great process. And as far as that 6% goes, um, my understanding is that these were responses of the patrons of the library. These are people who actually do come to the library. So. Yep. Anyone who doesn't feel welcome enough to come to the library right. would not be responding. So um, I think it's worthwhile to keep that in mind um, as well. So I think for that reason, too, it's a really, really important thing um, that the Jedi Committee is doing here. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Other, other thoughts. So I think probably for it, what would make sense is for us to endorse uh, or accept, maybe that's better uh, mm -hmm. than, than approved. So okay. um, you have a motion on the floor, which we'll un understand to be that the trustees accept um, this um, re report. Is that okay? Yep. The motion is that the trustees endorse this report. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Further discussion. All right. Nat? I vote yes. Far? Yes. Eugene? Yes. Lee Edwards? Yes. Tammy? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you, Far. Thank, Thank you. Convey your the gratitude, our gratitude to the committee. I will. Uh, for the work that was done to get the survey out and get it back. Okay. Anything else from PPP? Okay. Ms. Oh, Edwards, budget and investment. Well, the, the investment part of the, um, 
Budget Committee. Uh, we'll be, well, we'll be meeting next week with the representative from Vanguard, now Mercer, and we'll be, uh, you know, finding out both about the ongoing investment strategy and the ongoing fee structure. I think those are the two major things we'll be looking at. And at our most recent budget and investment committee, we conducted our, what we usually do at the meetings, which is we look at how the ongoing expenditure side of the budget is going and look at any shifts that Sharon is making um, to accommodate shifts in the, you know, library's priorities as the, or needs as the year unfolds. And uh, we did that and everything seemed in good order. And as I say, we're going to meet on Tuesday of this coming week with the representative from uh, Vanguard, and that's an in-person meeting. Right. Questions for budget and investment. Sharon, do you foresee, I mean, can you talk to us a little bit about budget things that might be um, affected by uh, an offsite, you know, relocation offsite? Uh, that money is in the building project, right? The, the project budget. But in terms of th things that might uh, have an impact on the annual budget of the library, is there anything in particular? Yeah, so what's funny is, um, you know, you all approved a budget where we were going to be out of the building the entire year. And um, in preparation for next week's budget committee meeting, I was able to up uh, provide, and I haven't spoken with the budget committee uh, about this yet, um, I was able to provide an adjusted budget because we have been in the building and so costs are higher um so the the budget the the total operating budget went up a little bit um but since it looks like we're going to be moving out it will be adjusted again so there will be an adjusted <laughs> budget part yeah. dos um but we'll talk about it uh next week during the budget committee and yes yeah, so this number here 2,994,261 that number will go down because we'll be leasing somewhere else and we won't have to pay you know x y and z kind of a thing so uh, more analyzing will have to be done okay other questions about budget and investment All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lee Edwards. Okay. <laughs> Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Richard Morse Esquire to give a report from the Friends. Thanks. Um, well, I wanted to point out that we're always, the executive board of the, of the Friends is always looking for new members. And uh, I think we're down, a, I think we're down a bit in terms of our total membership on the on the board, and um, you know we need um, you know certain skill sets, I guess. Uh, but we also need to have a, a an executive board that uh, addresses some of the concerns that uh, Farah and Austin have been talking about tonight. That sort of represents uh, that represents sort of a greater outreach to the the full um, complement of the town. So I just uh, just want to put that out there. If you meet people that you think would be good on the executive board of the friends um we would we would um be welcome new additions secondly um i want to um i want to um sort of echo what lee has been saying about the fundraising this was a good uh, month for the fundraising for the for the jones um i want to point out that there were 40 more gifts than last year at this time that's nothing to scoff at that's that i think that i'm hoping that that's something real and uh we also had um, uh, a successful pickleball tournament with, I think it was 50 participants. And um, you, you have to understand that at least from the outset, uh, some of us, um, there was the, the pickleball idea uh, represented a bit of a leap of faith since some of us had no idea what it was. So, uh, so <laughs> this was, um, and um, there was, uh, so, so that uh, was pulled up and we have some people on the Friends Executive Board who are very, very good fundraisers. 
Um, and finally, um, I just want to share that one of the great things about being a member of the uh, executive board of the Friends is hearing about the reach of these programs and how many people are getting involved through the programs uh, that the Friends um, that the Friends helps to pay for. Um, we have programs that involve new mothers. We have programs that involve teens. Um, we're always looking to um, bring more people from the community into the programs, but that's one of the joys of being at these meetings is hearing how, uh, how the programs have reached a lot of people in town. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Could you just remind us um, of how often the executive board meets? Once a month, generally okay. once a month, yeah. And it's generally a kind of two hour uh, event? An hour and a half or so. Um, we, we've moved from uh, to accommodate another member. We've, we're moving, I think, to um, uh, from Monday, uh, early Monday evening to early uh, Thursday evenings. Okay. If, if if we're talking to people about it, it's useful yeah. to know what the commitment. Yeah. Is. So you know, we're talking five five thirty on a Thursday. Okay. All right. Any questions for Rich? So just great appreciation as always for the work that went into producing the pickleball event <laughs> uh, that didn't happen casually. Uh, and it's, you know, again, we're lucky to have people who are so dedicated to the library that they would um, be willing to endure anything that was associated with pickleball in order to provide more resources for the, for the library. Okay, director's report. Yeah, I, other, the only highlight uh, uh, on the actual, the written director's report, uh, patrons by permission group, that neat little graph there. Uh, so most of the patrons that we serve, you, you can see, and this is when they check out books. It's not the same yeah. thing uh, as programming. Most of, of the folks that we are serving that are checking out books are adults, but I wanted to highlight uh, the difference between senior citizens and students. Um, there's not a large difference. And, um, you know, the computer just automatically tracks all of this. And, you know, it's often said that students don't use the library and and they do. And we're excited to do that. You know, every September that comes around and, and even February, um, we get an influx of college students coming to get library cards. And I think that's pretty darn cool. Um, I, I, uh, I did not use my public library when I was in college. So um, I love the fact that that uh, college students in Amherst uh, are using their public libraries. But that's really all I wanted to say. Sharon, could you explain? I did not understand the adult decertified aspirin administrator. I mean, what yeah, so this, every patron, when you sign up for a library card, you get coded for whatever reason. <laughs> and, you know, like library staff, you're, we're assigned yeah. a certain code and, and adults. And, and so that's what, so decertified is, those are patrons from towns that are not certified. In other words, they don't um, appropriate enough money to their library. And so um, when the Jones Library we do serve patrons from non-certified yep. towns. Yep. And when we choose to do that, we don't get reimbursed through state aid for that. Okay. Um, so that's why, yeah, there are all I sorts thought, of categories. When I read it, I thought it was like people who misbehave. No. I have one other question <laughs> about this. I have one other question about this chart. Um, I really didn't understand the category. Um of the temporary adult. Yeah, um, so um, lots of towns. Mean? Is that just people who are immature? I mean, what does it mean, temporary <laughs> adult? No, uh, it could be somebody who's living in a community for, you know, only a month. And, um, oh, oh, okay. So it's yeah. about it's about their, their residence, not yes. about their adulthood. Adult. Well, no. I just, I read it, temporary adult. I had no idea what it meant. Sorry. It's all librarian code. <laughs> I'm learning. All right. I'm going to tell my sweet love tonight yeah. that there's a library category called temporary adult. <laughs> she, may, she may have something to editorialize about it, but that's in, very funny. In any, case, any questions about the director's report? 
I do think you're, it's important to notice that students do use the um, do use the library. Uh, I think that's that's right, and it's really important for us to have a sense of um, the so to speak volume of use of the library and the ways in which we serve different populations. Okay, if there are no more questions for the library director, um, Sharon, could you just uh, remind us of when our next meeting is? December 13th, Friday at four. December 13th. So um, I will not see you before, um, in this context, before Thanksgiving. Uh, as library trustees, um, we have much to be thankful for. Um, the work that is done in the Amherst Library every day uh, became even more important than it would otherwise have been um, on Tuesday, November 5th. And the dedication of the director and the staff to serving everybody um, and to defending uh, the rights of people to read uh, is it's quite important work for all of us and we should be thankful that we have an opportunity to serve the town in this way and thankful for the work of the library so all of you have a very happy Thanksgiving and I'll look forward to seeing you again in December so the meeting is adjourned with one last thing come on everybody join me we love you Rich Morse <laughs> <laughs> we, love you, we, Rich do. we do. We do. <laughs> and Jean, you got to put that in the minutes. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. 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 Happy early Thanksgiving.